welcome back to another video. So today I am going to bring you a video that has been very highly requested. So many of you have been asking me what to do with all those Prismacolor grays. A lot of us have this 150 set of Prismacolors and you can see here we have quite a bit of grays. So we've got our French grays, our cool grays, and then we have our warm grays. I'm going to show you in this video exactly how they're meant to be used. I'm going to go ahead and swatch them out here on the swatch chart that I just got done making. And then I'm going to grab a coloring book and show you exactly how to use these. If you check the description box down below, you will find links down there to my Facebook group. I would love to have you join us over there, as well as my email list, my Etsy store, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. So many of you have asked me if I have a color family order for my Prisma colors. And to be honest, I don't even have a proper swatch chart for my Prisma colors because I'm so familiar with them that I just have never taken the time to do that. I know exactly what to pull, I know what colors go really good together and I just pull them and I put together color combinations. They are my most favorite colored pencil set and they're just the ones that I'm most familiar with without even needing a swatch chart. Mine are just kind of scattered in the case and they really have no rhyme or reason, just the one that I know. And aside from the grays, I could show you my color family order. So these are in the order that they would come in if you purchase the 150 set. At least I think they are. I don't know if I have the cool grays or the warm grays in the same order, but they all are in order according to you've got your 10%, your 20%, your 30%, 50%, 70%, and then 90%. And I think that they are all the same. So I've got my warm grays, my cool grays, and then my French grays. And they're all in order according to the percentage or the value of each one of the colors. And then I have quite a few pencils missing out of here. I have this whole entire section here where I have just extras of my most favorite colors that I use that I need an extra of because they've gotten too short or I don't have them in the front part of the case any longer. So some of these have been taken out because I'm working on quite a few different things. So some of the greens are missing because I have another video I'm working on, which is a question and answer video. Video, and I'm using some of the greens for that one as well as another another um, page that I've been working on so I've got my greens here and then my browns a few of the browns are definitely missing as well because I'm doing something where I'm coloring skin and so a couple of these are pulled out and then over here I've got some more greens which are my lighter greens and then my teals, and I've got all my light blues together. I have, I always keep my indigo blue right here, and then I have my other blues, and then my blues go all the way here. I think all the blues are in here, and then my purples, my lavender, and then back over here, and I'm kind of going backwards from the grays to the front of the case, but I always start with my yellow colors. I usually have my cream in here somewhere, so that's probably pulled out as well because I've been using it to color the portrait that I'm working on right now. But here I have some of the other colors that come in the Prisma color that are a little bit different. Some of them are purple, some of them are like rosy colors. And then I have like my beiges and my peaches all sort of just stuck in here. And then my pinks and my reds. And then I've got more of my darker reds and then my red oranges and quite a few of these are missing. And then my colors that are kind of yellow oranges and then golds into my yellows and I've got some of those missing. So there's quite a few colors missing out of here. So I just wanted to address that because I've had so many people ask me if I'm going to put the Prisma colors in color family order. And I don't know yet if I'm gonna do that because I'm just so familiar with these that for me, I really don't need it. So in this video, we're just gonna focus on the grays and my grays are are all in order, the order that I like and the order that most people I would assume use. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these out just so you could see the colors and how the warm grays and the cool grays and the French grays all differ from one another. I'm gonna do like I always do where I create a gradient of the values of each one of the colored pencils. So it's gonna go light, medium, and then dark in each one of these boxes. And I'm gonna speed this portion up to music as I swatch out all these colors.
colors are all swatched out now. I've got my warm grays, my cool grays, and my French grays. And by looking at this now, you could see the difference in what each gray looks like. If you look at these warm grays up here, you could tell that they have a lot more brown in them. And if you look here at the cool grays, you could tell that they have a lot more blue in them. And then the French grays, they also have more brown in them. I would really consider a French gray more of a warm gray rather than a cool gray. You're always going to be able to identify a cool gray because you could clearly look at them and tell they have more blue. The way that we come up with a gray is by adding white to black. And the way that we come up with black is by mixing a blue and a brown. And I have videos on this. I can't remember exactly which video it is, but I demonstrated all of the different ways you could create black. And I showed you how to combine a brown with a blue and how it changes the way that that black looks, whether it is warm or cool, dependent upon the amount of brown or blue that you add to it. So if you wanted to create a warm black, you're going to have a much higher concentration of brown. Brown is a lot of times a much darker shade of orange, and of course orange is a warm color. Now if you wanted to create a cool black, you would use a much higher concentration of blue to create that. If you wanted to take those blacks that you created and you wanted to turn them into grays, you would just mix them and add more white. Now, if we look down here at the French grays, it looks as though our French grays are more of a warm gray because you could definitely see a whole lot of brown in these French grays. Now, if we take a look at the color wheel, this color wheel is really, really nice because it explains to you here exactly what warm colors are and what cool colors are. So it tells you your warm colors are your reds, oranges, and your yellows, and your cool colors are your greens, your blues, and your violets. Now purple and green, they are both transition colors. So you could see here that we have a purple and this purple has a lot more blue in it. So this is gonna lean more towards a cool color and it actually tells you right here on the color wheel that your cool colors actually start here with this violet and they go right over here to this green which is your other transition color. And so this green here is a cool color because it has more green in it even though it does have some yellow. And then when we get down here to our actual yellow, it tells you right here on the color wheel with an arrow that your warm colors are gonna start here and they're gonna go all the way around to right here to where this red violet is. You could tell that this red violet here still has purple in it, but it has a lot more red in it, which makes it a warmer color. So we've got our warm colors from here to here on this half of the color wheel, and then we've got our cool colors from here to here on this side of the color wheel with our transition colors being the purple and the green. So another really easy way to be able to tell whether your colors are warm or cool and you don't have a color wheel, it is really easy to just think that your cool colors are cold. So think like ice or snow. And then your warm colors are hot, like your reds and your oranges and your yellows, so it's very easy to think of warm colors as hot, like fire. I'm gonna take this now over to a coloring book and I'm gonna show you exactly how you could use your grays with your other colors to create all that added depth and dimension on an object on your coloring page. I grabbed Johanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder and I've already marked off the page here with my little paper clip that I'm gonna color I'm just going to do one of these stamps and I, I picked this turtle here and I'm going to take this turtle and I'm just going to color in a part of his shell and then I'm going to show you how you would come back with grays and really add a lot more depth and dimension with your grays after you've colored in something. So I chose just three colors here. I have the Pale Sage, the Kelly Green, and the Celadon Green. And I'm just gonna color in the shell of the turtle here, and I'm gonna do a speed through of that, and then I'm gonna come back after 
I do the speed through and you see his little shell here come all together and I'm going to show you how you could add extra depth and dimension and show you exactly how to choose the right colors to be able to do that from your set of grays. colored in and you can see that I decided to come back and add a little bit of the yellow chartreuse just because it is one of my favorite colors and I thought that the shell needed a little bit something more and a little bit of a pop. <laughs> if y'all have been watching my videos for quite some time you know that I always really like that highlight to really really stand out and I just thought it needed a little bit of the uh, yellow chartreuse so we could have a little bit of that neon in there and I think it looks really great. Now we're going to come back and I'm going to show you exactly how to choose your grays. So greens like I said earlier in the video are cool colors. So here is my color wheel again, and it tells you right here on the color wheel, like I showed you earlier, that our green is cool color. So we go here from our green yellow, which this matches up really, really nicely. We do have a little bit of that uh, warm color in there because I added that chartreuse, but that's okay because we're not gonna use the gray to actually go over any of the areas where I put the yellow. So in this case, since we are using cool colors, since you can see here this matches up sort of like here or maybe a little bit right here, so the green is definitely a cool color. So we want to grab our Prismacolor chart and because we're using cool colors, we want to choose a cool gray. Now when you're doing this, it's always better to start off lighter. So you're gonna pick one that is much lighter and if you, think that you still don't have the depth and dimension that you want, you can come back and you can go over it with a little bit of a darker gray. I think I'm gonna start with the 50% and if the 50% doesn't add enough depth, I'm gonna to go to the 70%, but I think the 50% should be okay. So I'm gonna grab my 50% cool gray. Okay, so I just sharpened my 50% cool gray because you wanna make sure when you're doing something like this that you got a nice, beautiful, sharp tip on your pencil. So that's what my pencil looks like. And we are gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you exactly how to just go over these areas with your gray. And this one may even, oh yeah, it probably is dark enough. Do you see how that is just adding so much more depth? Look at the difference. So can you see the difference between this one and say one of the other parts of the shell all around the rest of the turtle? So look at the difference here, all that depth that that added just by adding that gray right over the top. And I'm gonna do this around the entire turtle. Let's go ahead and get in here just so we could really create that separation between this part of the shell and this part of the shell down here. And if you wanted to create even more depth, you could always come back and try your 70% cool gray, but I think this one is probably just enough. I might try that one just for the sake of the video to show y'all what happens when you go a little bit darker. But let me show you exactly how I do this first. But do you see all the extra added depth and dimension that just created? And it didn't take away from the green, it just sort of blended uh, right in there. And then of course, if you were using colors like reds or yellows or oranges, you are gonna use your warm grays with those. And then I always like to come back with my darkest of whatever my color combination was. And I like to go back over it one more time and blend that color into the gray so this way I don't see gray. So I'm always gonna go back over and I'm always going to add another layer right over the top. And I'm gonna to do this in all the places where I added that gray. 
and it's really going to make a huge difference. And I really don't think that I need to go any darker. I was going to try 70%, but I really honestly don't think that we need it. So let me come back and pull some of these colors together. This is my Pale Sage, and I'm just going to pull some of these colors down and blend them in. And you all know I'm going to have to come back with that yellow chartreuse and really add that pop in there. And by doing that and adding that uh, pop of color in, it really does make a huge difference as well. So let's come in and just add a little bit more of that. And sometimes I like to leave a little bit of white. You could see like right here, I left a little bit of the white of the paper in there. And that really helps to, to create just a little bit of an extra highlight. Look at the difference that this yellow chartreuse makes. That is so pretty. And with your Prismacolors, they will just go right over one another. So you can take your brighter colors and sort of blend them into your darker colors and just lay them right over. And I could just keep coming back and I could add more layers just to add more, even more depth if I wanted to. So I really want to test this out for y'all. And so I went ahead and grabbed my 70% cool gray and we're going to see how much more depth we could get out of this little turtle shell here. Oh, wow. Look at that. So it's adding even more depth and really making it look elevated. It's just lifting it right off the page and it's creating quite a bit of separation between each one of these parts with this darker gray. colors and I'm just going to finish coloring in the rest of the uh, turtle with these two colors his head and his little legs down here and then I'm going to show you how you could take these two colors and add one of the grays and create a little bit more depth in his body so I've got ginger root for my highlight color and then I've got sandbar brown for my darker color which is going to end up turning into our mid-tone <laughs> grabbed my 70% French gray. Let me show you here exactly what it looks like. So this is a 70% French gray and you could see that the French grays already have a lot of brown in them. So it's going to go really good with these other colors that I used in his body. So we're going to use the French gray just to add a little bit more depth and dimension. looking at this and I'm thinking it needs to have a little bit of a pop here as well. So I grabbed Sable and I'm just going to go right in here and blend these colors together and I think it's going to make a bit of a difference. Okay so I grabbed some more colors. I got Mineral Orange, Goldenrod, and Eggshell and these are warm colors. So I'm going to go ahead and use these colors to color the outer part of this stamp here around the turtle. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how we could use warm grays to really enhance that area as well.
portion of our little stamp colored in. And so those are, like I said, warm colors. Again, it's easy to remember if you just think red and orange and yellow are hot like fire. We are gonna come back here and we are going to look at our warm grays. I'm gonna start with my 50% warm gray. And if that one is not enough, I'm gonna come back and add in some of my 70% warm gray. So let me go ahead and grab my warm grays. Okay, and like I said earlier, make sure that your uh, tip of your pencil is nice and sharp and you've got a clean sharpen or just sharpened your pencil. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just going to go right over these colors and create a bit more depth. And I'm not pushing very hard when I'm doing this. I'm making sure I'm using a very light hand because you don't want too much of this color going down on the paper. We don't want it to look gray, we just want it to give the illusion as though it is creating more depth. And of course I am gonna come back again and I will definitely be going over this with the orange just to sort of blend some of those colors in so that you can't see the gray. back and I'm just going right over everywhere that I had added that gray just to put that orange or that shade of orange right back in there so that you can't see the gray. But I think the gray made quite a bit of difference and added quite a bit more of the depth and dimension that it needed. And when you're adding your colors, just keep on adding layers down on your coloring pages until you're satisfied with the way it looks because the layers are what is adding all that extra depth and dimension that you need in whatever it is you're coloring. in here and I'm going to take my lemon yellow and I'm going to add a little bit of that in there because you all know I need to have that pop of color <laughs> and look at the difference and it's really blending all of those colors in beautifully as well. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to do any more on this cute little stamp and I've been doing quite a lot after I stopped filming and so I wanted to just insert that in here and I'm going to go ahead and speed it up as I continue to just finish this off. So I wanted to go ahead and add this in at the end of the video. I wasn't expecting to finish the entire thing, but I couldn't leave it incomplete. So I came back and I did the outside of my stamp. And the colors I used are Celadon Green, Light Green, Yellow Chartreuse, and my 50% Cool Gray. Of course I used the Cool Gray because green is a cool color. And I also used this Kelly Green. And I really like the way that it turned out. What I did is I decided to just bring the colors that were here from the inside of the stamp on the turtle shell and bring them outward so that everything would just sort of blend in. I made sure that I had that pop of color in there by using the yellow chartreuse, just like I did on the inside of his shell in a few places, just to give it that pop of color. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned a little something. And if you decide to follow this tutorial, I'd love to see what you come up with. If you would like to share what you've done and you're in my Facebook group, feel free to tag me so that I can see it. I love to see your work, especially when you follow one of my tutorials. 
Everything that you've seen me use in this video will be down in the description box below, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring! Bye!